Our real beliefs are what we live by. Real belief and knowing are one. But a man who really believes is just as though she knows it. It's genuine to know him. So what I tell you, belief, I call it faith. I call it belief. It is not complete to become experience. One must experience it and then they know it. Now you will hear the same thing tonight. Everyone present will hear exactly the same thing, but no two will hear it in the same depth. Some will hear it on the surface. Others will hear it below the surface. And others will hear it below the surface. And others will hear it down in the very depths of their being. It's where you hear it as we are told, the word came to them as it did to us, but it did not profit them because it was not mixed with faith in those who heard it. They heard it and rejected it, but they heard it and rejected it, but they heard it. It came in and went out. It did not receive acceptance by those who read it. And so they instantly rejected it. Tonight, I hope you will not reject, but I'm here to tell you that that's your choice. You're free. You could accept it or reject it. But I tell you, if I get through the night and you apply it because you are the offer and power, I can tell you that it doesn't operate itself. But I ask you to think of a friend. Just think of a friend. And now, hearing tell you something lovely, something lovely about himself, about a mutual friend, or about you. Just hearing you believe that that actually took place. You may say, well, I imagined it, but it didn't really take place. No, but when you imagine a state before you have external confirmation of that state to you, it is as though you heard it externally. You know, it this internal act is equal to the external confirmation of that act. You get to that point because the difference between God and man is measured only in terms of this imaginative power. If I were to speak of the power that is God, as we are told in scripture, it is revealed constantly as power, sheer power. Third, fourth, fifth, and sixth verses of the book of Exodus, Moses stands in the presence of power that is creative power. And the distance between God and man is measured by simply power on this level. If I'm on the surface of my being, only this is real, and what my senses are the law. But as I go deeper into my own being, moving ever toward the core of my being, who is God, then my imaginative act becomes externalized quickly. Externalized, and I go deeper and deeper and deeper. On the surface, it seems to take an interval of time. If I believe, if I don't believe, it never comes into some external terminal. Never forget I'm living in a world, not understanding it, not knowing what it's all about. So really, the story that I want to tell you is trying to ask you and plead with you to buy your religion wholesale. Go to the maker, go to the source, don't buy it in retail. There's something in between, no learning between you and the source. You go right into the depth and buy your whole religion wholesale by going to the source, which is your own wonderful human imagination, your own eminence, that's God. The story we told you last Tuesday, then whose name was Eddie? Eddie had the identical experience of the one recorded in the book of Exodus when he was. Do not come up here. Read the words. The words all do not come here. Read it in the book of Exodus. First April 6, verses of the third set of the Exodus. And the version under Moses, do not come here. They Moses, it is faced not in shame, but in fear. He was afraid to look at God. So Eddie saw the symbol of God and he ran. He was scared. It's the identical story that these of the revelation of God's name. I am, he proceeded. I am the one inside. Repeat itself, so loud he thought it came from the door. He looked up thinking of some machine, maybe some helicopter with a PAS system broadcasting the name I am. It was not a thing inside. And then the third, don't come up here. He'll kill us. He did go up to the hill to confront a rattlesnake. What? 
He was not called the spring. It was simply a 30 foot long snake all stretched out, the symbol of the creative power of God. But it scared him. It killed man. It's man remaining active, sees what really is in himself, that he's solely responsible for everything that is taking place in his will, solely responsible. Escapism, it's too much until he goes deeper and deeper and hears the same bird of truth. But here it is in depth. Then he assumes full responsibility for all that is taking place within him. For tonight, let me share with you a few stories. Seven years ago, a lady, she's not here tonight. She's out with a new job and has taken away for a while. Wrote that emotion creates reality. She said to herself, what if it is? I would like to go to Egypt. She had no money. She's never been a lady of means. I am working small sums of money, could never accumulate what it would take to make the trip. And so the usual story, she told her dream. She didn't keep it to herself. She choked it. Nothing wrong with it if you really believe it. You can tell it as you're told in the script. Go tell no man. Let's show John. Show the world. But that's it. You don't tell men before the man believes you. After the event, you may question your honesty, but if you tell him before the event, then he is assured because actually you have a witness to the fact you did tell him before the event. So that is also in scripture. Now, I know I tell you before it takes place, but when it does take place, you may believe, but that is courage in the depth of the soul, where one knows the imaginal act is a but at the very moment of the Lord, though not yet seen by the outer man. But not everyone has that courage and that faith in the imaginal, so she told it. Naturally, her friends criticized her. It is stupid. They go to that manual. They show money, not religion. What is it? He is telling you that an assumption, if false, if persisted in, will harden into effect. Well, that's stupid. It doesn't make sense to them. A true judgment must conform to the external, but to which it relates. So if I say I am lonely and there is no doubt to bear witness to my judgment, my judgment is false. So that's what they gathered from what she told them that I am teaching. And so the whole thing is so stupid. Well, the years went on. It's been seven years now, and this is what happened this past week. She got a job. She got a job. She's a nurse, and her job moves around. She goes from home to home where the need is there. And so she found herself in the environment or the neighborhood of a friend she had not seen or contacted in a year. They had exchanged a birthday card and a Christmas greeting with a little note on the card, but no telephone call and no other contact. It never fell in the neighborhood. She also blamed the strain of those on the royal. She said, oh, you can have it. You can have it. You can have it. All right. All right. All right. I'll take it. What is it? And then this is the story. There was a party, a pre Lenten party of the children from Mardi Gras married a Catholic society, the Joseph and Mary Society. There were no prizes. The major prize was a 30 day trip first class, all expenses paid, stopping along the way at the Hilton hotels in the Middle East. Egypt is part of the itinerary. The lady and her family had spent several months last year abroad and had no desire this year to go abroad again. In fact, they've already arranged to go to New York City for the World's Fair, which opens in April. So a trip abroad is out. Furthermore, this ticket, this door ticket, only accepts one person, not a group, not a family. So that was what her friend said to her. She would give up gems at all. I'll take it and then call me up to tell the story. Delaying family seven years. Do you still? No. Has her ticket, if she wants it to the Northeast, where Egypt is included, and she goes first class, all expenses paid, but everything paid because she believes, moving in the interview, her faith would not be. She justified it by saying, Maybe I don't want it, or in some strange way, tried to explain it away. But it still, in its own good time, came to the surface. I ask you not to throw your dreams away and feel that they are impossible. 
a realization in this strange world of external facts. Every dream can come true if I can get through to you that your imagination is God and that your imaginal act, when you think of a dream, is carrying on the conversation. That is Jesus Christ in action. Examine yourself to see whether you are holding to your faith. Test yourself. Do you not realize that Jesus Christ is in you? He is in you. Then who is to use your own imagining? God is your imagination. God is your imagination. God in action is imagining and God in action is Christ. Christ, as defined in scripture, is the portal and under which to love God. Why did everyone can receive it? Do you really believe in Jesus Christ? When you believe in Jesus Christ on the cross themselves, if a piece of wood or a piece of marble or clay or something other than a living God and the very being kneeling before these external icons, it was the king of Greece that just died and they brought what they considered a holy icon. The man who has died in the eyes of God, our king is just like us. They do not depend on love for one another, greater than his die for never. To what extent have they heard the word of God and believe? So when he dies, he's going to bring a holy icon. It didn't work. This father was an icon. And so you may see things like any other in the world. I hope that everyone here will find the real Jesus Christ, the real Jesus Christ, the real Jesus Christ is your own wonderful human. Imagining that God in action, the real God is your own wonderful, lovely imagination. There I am, that God.